Hey friends, welcome back to Whiskey and Wit. Today's video is day 10 in the 12 days of Christmas. I cannot believe it's here already, it is flying by. Today's video, we are doing some more Dollar Tree projects. These are all ornaments and or present toppers. Let's get started. First are these adorable snowman clothespins. They are so easy to make and they're probably something that you haven't seen stuck on a present like this before either. So to make these, you will need a package of Dollar Tree clothespins. You also need some markers and some twine. So the first step is to break apart your clothespins so then that way you can paint them and you don't have to worry about getting the clip a different color. I just took some Waverly white chalk paint and a Dollar Tree brush and covered all of my clips. I covered all the ends, tops and bottoms. Once those are dry, you go back through and you just reassemble your clothespins. Now, it took me a couple minutes to figure out how to put it back together, but then it was super easy. Then I pulled up some graphics on Pinterest. There's been some other folks that have done similar faces or things on clothespins, so you can pull those up to get some inspiration. So I went through first with my black Sharpie, made the faces and the buttons, and then I followed that up by going back through with my orange Sharpie and giving them cute little carrot noses. And then the final step is to take your twine. This red and white twine came in a pack of three from Dollar Tree's new craft section. But you can also get something like this at Hobby Lobby, Target, Michaels, wherever. And I tied those around the little clip area for their scarf and I love these. Like I said, you can clip them on your tree as filler like it's shown here, or you can clip them. This is just a little cedar sprig that I grabbed from Target. Up next are these framed patent prints, and if you guys watched my other Dollar Tree DIY video, I told you that it'd be worth downloading the printables because I had something else coming up. For this, you're gonna need a big piece of foam core board, um, a few canvases, I used four by sixes, and you're also gonna need the free printables, which I will link down below. First step is to open up your canvases and take something, I used a flathead screwdriver to pop up those staples because you wanna get the canvas off of the outside. And then once you do that, keep the frame for this project and also keep the outside for the next project. So then I went through and sanded off any rough edges. Then I put on my gloves and gave them a quick coat of stain. This is just what I always have in my house. It's Minwax Dark Walnut. You guys know I use that on everything, but then all my stuff matches, so it works out. You're gonna go through and do all of the edges. So inside, outside, back edges, everything. And then you're gonna let them dry. Give it at least an hour, but longer is better with stain. Once they're dry, go through and I just cut down a piece of foam core board to make it easier, but I traced the shape. Then I went through and just scored it with some scissors and popped the pieces out. The scoring um, with the scissors or with a box cutter will help you so you don't have a lot of those flyaways and your edges are gonna be a lot cleaner. So I scored them, popped them back and forth, and then I've got three sizes that will fit inside those frames. The mistake I made is I used the same frame to go through and trace. You're gonna wanna use them for each individual one because they're a little bit different size. But then I went through and took my individual foam pieces and traced them. I printed these out as four by sixes and then I just cropped them as needed. Then I just took some Mod Podge, put it on the background, and then I inserted it back into the frame. And then if you're worried that your pieces aren't gonna stay in the frame, if they're not fitting tightly, you can just go in, put some hot glue, and then push your picture in from the front. If you push it in through the back, you're gonna get glue in the front, so you wanna push that glue in. You can squeeze the sides to get it to stick, but I just gave it to each of my pieces so then that way I wasn't worried that they were gonna fall apart. And then two big dabs of glue on the back top corners, add some Dollar Tree jute twine, and you are all set. I like how simple these are. You could definitely add some greenery to them. You could add ribbon for the hanger, whatever you like. I love these patents, they're so cute. The printables on that site are literally so worth it. I will link their blog down below. Check it out if you missed that other video because these printables are so, so worth it. Up next are little block ornaments. 
So these guys start with some tumbling tower blocks from the Dollar Tree, as well as some Dollar Tree jute twine. So step one is to take your blocks and paint them. So I went through with my white Waverly chalk paint and I painted um, a few of these blocks so I can make multiples of these. Now, if you're planning on making the thicker blocks the same way that I'm doing here, you don't have to paint one of the long sides because you're just gonna glue them together. If you're gonna just do one and glue your hanger on the back, then you're gonna obviously wanna paint all of the sides. So it's personal preference there. I also went through with some crimson by Waverly and painted some of them red so I had some variety. Once that paint dried, I assembled the ornaments. So I took a big dab of hot glue on one of the sides, put some twine in between, and then just went ahead and stuck them together with the hot glue. So then you've got your hanger right in the center, and it also makes your piece a little bit thicker because those pieces are not like regulation Jenga size. Um, so you're gonna want them to be probably a little thicker so that they stand out. So then there's a lot of things you can do with this one. I wrote to mom from Wit and Alex. I'm going to use that as a kind of to and from tag. I wrote Mary on one of them in calligraphy. And then another one I turned into a snowman. And these, if you don't do the red and white twine, you can literally use these through the winter. They are so cute and I am having such a fun time drawing snowman faces. And finally, I am obsessed with these little scrolls. They turned out so cute. And I have a fun trick to show you on how you can get that calligraphy at home without a Cricut. Project, you're going to need some large craft sticks and also the actual canvas from those deconstructed canvases. So step one is I took that same wood stain, so dark walnut by Midwax, stained as many um, sticks as I needed. Then I went through and reused the canvas pieces from those patent prints and I cut them out. I got rid of all the outside stuff so that inner rectangle is what you're gonna wanna cut. Then I started measuring my scrolls. So I went through and made some that were just the same width as the canvas. I went through and did some that were smaller. Uh, it's really just personal preference. And also you're going to want to keep your canvas side up because you're not gonna wanna write on the backside. You totally can, but that's a stark white and it really negates the natural look of this project. So then once you have your stuff all measured, then what I did is I went through, I took my cell phone, I put the brightness all the way up and then I pulled up a free printable. Then I went through and just traced it. You have to be careful so you don't change your screen zoom. But then I went through with the marker and just made it um, black sharpie so that turned out super nice and it was really easy to do and I did that for a couple other sayings as well um, so this is a great alternative if you don't have a Cricut or if you really want to have that hand-drawn calligraphy look um, and you have a medium like this canvas that you can just crank up your brightness and have it shine through So then the last step is to assemble your scrolls. So I put a line of glue at the top and the bottom and stuck my wood pieces on there. And then to add your hanger, I flipped it over and gave myself two large kind of dollops of glue, I guess, and um, went through and put some Dollar Tree jute twine down similarly to how I hung the framed pictures. These look so good everywhere. They look great on presents. They look great on the tree. These would look great also if you just had an area where you wanted to hang them. You could also get some like balsa wood and make large versions of them. The possibilities are endless. I really love how all of these projects turned out. They're really great for ornaments for your tree or to just dress up your presents for super cheap and they're really easy projects. You can make a large batch of them and stick them on all your presents and it looks like you tried really hard and only you have to know that it's from the Dollar Tree. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up if you like doing Dollar Tree DIYs with me. Also hit subscribe down below if you haven't already so you don't miss a future Whiskey and Wet video. Again, thank you so much for watching. It means the world and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!